Hello and welcome back. I hate seagulls. Started early that one, didn't it? That is right, today we want to look at a very intriguing little motherboard for you DIY NAS Builder Home Lab enthusiasts. Today we're looking at this. This is the CWWK Q670, an MITX Gen 5 ready motherboard with eight SATA ports, physically native SATA motherboard ports there on the back of the board. And in today's video, we're going to talk about what this board can do, what it can't do, and whether it should be the right motherboard for your larger scale NAS server build. But before we go any further, we got to talk price because right now, unlike a lot of the uh, CWWK or Changwei or even Topton boards that we talked about in the past, a lot of those boards, whenever we talked about those, these have been motherboards that have arrived with a CPU on board, an embedded SOC uh, processor, a little mobile equivalent to a bigger desktop equivalent from Intel or AMD. This motherboard is currently not available with a uh, CPU pre-sold. It doesn't have a CPU included with it. No doubt AliExpress and the like will start knocking out pre-built bundles out the door, but right now, this board you can only really get on its own you can also get one that's got the uh, network pro uh, remote uh, maintenance we'll talk about it later on but this board on its own on its bare bones equivalent uh, rocks out the gate for about two hundred dollars although i've gone ahead and installed uh, an i5 12th generation cpu and there it's worth highlighting this motherboard supports 12th 13th and even 14th generation intel core processors there lga 1700 processors to be more precise there so again fourth generation only really got rolled out october november of last year 2023 so that's quite up to date in terms of architecture now the standouts for this motherboard as mentioned earlier on probably I would argue one of the more basic features that still you don't see anywhere near enough on an ITX motherboard is the fact that it's got eight SATA ports on board. It's not utilizing an M.2 uh, to SATA adapter. There. It's not using a PCIe riser card to add the extra ports there. It's not using uh, an HD mini SAS to fan out SATA cable supported extra. This is eight honest to goodness, SATA ports on there. But alongside those SATA ports, this also arrived with three M.2 NVMe slots on board. And as mentioned, Gen 5 architecture, baby. One of them is a Gen 5 times 4 slot, supporting up to 14 gigabytes per second Gen 5 SSDs, like the one supported by the Fison E26 controller, some of which we've talked about in the last six months or so. Now, alongside that, that SSD slot there not only supports your traditional 2280 length SSDs, but also up to 22110, they're even longer SSDs, promising a larger capacity or even some of those uh, additional power failover add ons onto those longer. M2 SSD PCBs. Now on the rear of the board, alongside with that M.2 for Gen 5, we've got those two on the back Gen 4 times 4 slots there. So again, you're not even holding out and losing out on some Gen 3 limited slots on the back for an OS drive. That is three M.2 slots of some serious potential there. But you have to keep in mind that the M2 slot, as you can see there on the top there, for our Gen 5, you're going to need serious heat sinks to take advantage of that. And it has to be said, the Gen 5 heat sinks are getting super beefy there. So do factor in just how much space you're going to be playing with there. Now, talking of space, let's talk about the PCIe Gen, um, the PCIe Gen 5 times 16 slot there at the top, a full time 16 there, which means not only can you take advantage of high performance uh, network cards, although I've not really seen much in the way of Gen 5 network cards commercially, you've seen a lot of Gen 4 cards, allowing you to install Gen 5 upgrade cards that fire by furication will allow you to add further Gen 4 slots via that Gen 5 open PCIe bandwidth there. You will need its own dedicated controller on board to really take advantage of that, but at the very least, you can really spray out its wings on that single PCIe slot there. Now, do keep in mind that this card is going to be heavily dependent on not only the CPU that you choose to install and therefore allow you the amount of hardware architecture to spread out as thin or as thick, thickly as you like, but also keep in mind that the BIOS on this motherboard is a right open 
book that you're going to have to navigate through there. And with regards to separating the available PCIe's across the PCIe upgrade slot and those three different M.2 NVMe slots there, there is a huge degree of personal customization you're going to have to do on this. And when it comes to that CPU there, with regardless of the one you install on there, the reason I've gone ahead and utilized this with the cooler on top is I wanted to demonstrate one of the problems I encountered during the installation there. And that is the overhang of that cooler that I'm using there over the UDIM uh, memory slots here on the base there. Getting a DDR5 module in there, this supports up to 5600 megahertz. Installing memory in that additional slot, as you can see there, really minimizes the available space depending on the angle and direction you were planning on installing your cooler there. Remember, you've got a bit of a degree of rotation on those coolers, but it really is touch and go how much space there you get. And the problem is, as you can see from this example, yes, some might argue I could have rotated this fan around, but regardless of which way you rotate your cooling fan it's either going to overhang your gen 5 slot here which again massive cool as we talked about or it's going to overhang potentially over the pcie slot and if you're going to use that pcie slot for upgraded m2s one way or another depending on the, the height and definitely width of that cooler, you're going to potentially overhang one of these important upgrade slots there, depending on what you're going to use. And that's, again, the curse of MITx. It's great to have so much power and performance and potential in such a small MOBO, but just keep in mind that the higher and beefier those CPUs you're going for, therefore the better the cooler that you're going to use, the potential for the clustering of that hardware in such a small space. Now, ports and connections on this motherboard are all fairly standard stuff for the most part. I'll say straight away, I like the fact that we've got plenty of USB ports to play with there. We've got US lots of 10 gig USBs. We've even got 20 gig USB type C port there at the base. We've got a couple of HDMIs that support HDMI 2.1. Thanks to, again, depending on the CPU that you're going to choose to use, having integrated graphics, how far you can scope that really does come down to you. But what I really like is, although it is just 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, which again opens the door, to mm, discussions and internal complications you may have choosing a PCIe upgrade card having to pick between storage potential and of course NIC external connection I will also argue the idea that it now supports that um, V Pro that Intel V Pro um, network management of this is going to be tremendously useful in a NAS capacity what does that mean when you're utilizing this motherboard in your NAS setup you're not going to be dependent on accessing just BIOS via a KVM keyboard video mouse interface face there thanks to that intel v pro uh, ema service there you can allow for network remote management via the bios and that intel ema user interface there which is going to be hugely important now we're seeing more and more business class nazis arrive with that out of service or sorry out of bounds access to the system there even when you do peruse those bios there the level of customization and control is massive and again when you introduce the cpu of choice that you're going to use it is going to either open doors or close doors depending on your own personal sound it makes measuring power consumption in this review a great deal more difficult and also with regards to ssd performance when we did that this setup with unraid on board inside our test machine there we ran tests on all three lanes and by default the even though i utilized a fires on e26 controller on the gen 5 times 4 slot without tinkering it had been downgraded to four times for them meaning the performance was still pretty good at 6.2 6.3 gigabytes per second um, read and write i should add by the way it was still not as good as it would have been if we could have gone full on the five times four and a lot of that was the cpu that i was utilizing and i could have gone into the bios and really opened things up there's a great deal to like for a lot of serious nas builders in this board the eight bays of start of storage tick 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 the three dot m dot twos that were the right customization in the cpu of choice is going to be beneficial to you and i think we have to at least acknowledge that the support of U udim memory on this means larger amounts of memory according to the specifications on the manufacturer's website again heavily dependent on the cpu of choice of course you can support up to 96 gigabytes of memory on each of those slots they bring up to a total of 192 gig of ddr5 memory keep in mind that you have to go for at least higher than an i5 12th gen if you want to go up to 5600 megahertz memory uh, and of course ecc memory is going to be massively dependent on your cpu of choice and although the architecture on this seemingly indicates that it is possible you are going to have to be reliant on the cpu that you choose to use we're going to be setting up this board soon in our long work 
worked on Silverstone CS382 case with icy dock caddies and seeing just what a board like this can bring to the table. So do stay tuned for that. But right now, at least midway to 2024, if you're looking for the best power versus storage capacity MITX motherboard, this is very hard to beat. And at, you know, I say $200, I've seen it listed at 185 and even 180 in some resellers out there. It's a nice little board choice for a larger scale storage capacity DIY now server. Is it perfect? No, but I think for those of you that are looking at MITX that have already decided about the limitations that a single PCIe slot isn't going to uh, you know harm your long-term storage potential needs this is a great choice i just wish 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 we could do more about the placement of some of those slots because we've got some real cluster going on there but stay tuned for the follow-up video on this and a written article below over on as compares that we'll be adding to as we do further testing on this board thank you so much for watching links in the description to this and a few other retailers you can get a hold of it so if you were going to go to those shops anyway please use those links it really helps us out here at the channel but apart from that thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time.